Welcome to today's Daily Word. I'm Pastor Jeremiah, and we're going to look at Matthew 3 this morning. And in particular, I want to focus in on the wild man in the wilderness, otherwise known as John the Baptist. So we're going to look at John the Baptist. So I'm going to give you a few insights into who he was. In particular, we're going to look at his ministry, his message, and his master. Well, let's start with his ministry. According to Matthew 3, 1, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now you need to know it had been over 400 years since the people had had a prophet. So when John comes preaching in the wilderness, it was a significant, significant event. And he came to preach and baptize. He preached that the kingdom of God was at hand, and he had a baptism of repentance. Look at verse 6. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. So John's ministry looked like preaching, and it looked like baptizing. And it occurred in the wilderness. It says this is in the wilderness of Judea, verse 1. Now that was about a day's journey outside of Jerusalem. It was a rugged, barren, really inhospitable desert land. And yet that's where John's ministry was. And you wonder, well, who was coming to him? I mean, it was a day's journey. Well, the crowds were immense. Just look at who was coming. Verse 5 says, Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him. So John was immensely popular. And he was in the most seemingly illogical, remote spot ever for a popular preacher, and he was preaching a most unfortunate and unpopular message, and yet the crowds were huge. And, you know, Jesus tells us in Matthew 21 that there were tax collectors and prostitutes there coming to listen to him. And then here in Matthew, he tells us in verse 7 that even the religious elite were coming to hear John. We have the Pharisees and Sadducees. And the Pharisees were ritualists, they were legalists, they were separatists, they were adherents of the Mosaic Law and all its fine detail. And then there were the Sadducees. The Sadducees were wealthy, they were aristocratic, they were the liberals and the political opportunists of the day. But even they were going to hear this wild man, John, in the wilderness. And verse 3 tells us that John's ministry was in the spirit of Elijah. Isaiah 40, verse 3 says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Well, that was John's ministry, to get the people ready through repentance to meet their Messiah. Let's look now at John's message. And it says in verse 2 that John says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John was a repentance preacher. He didn't mince words. And when he said repent, what he was saying is not, I want you to feel bad for sins. You need to feel remorse. What he was saying is, you need to have a change of mind that leads to a change of action. Repentance was to transform their lifestyles. That's why it was a baptism of repentance, the scripture says. So when the Pharisees and Sadducees come, John says this to them, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. John hammered home on this idea of repentance. He wasn't a namby-pamby, wishy-washy, soft, feel-good preacher. John preached repentance, and John the Baptist preached judgment. Listen to what he said. First, he called them a brood of vipers, which is uh, no soft term. Then he says, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So John was a judgment preacher. There is wrath to come. That's why he says in verse 10, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, which means judgment is imminent. Repent now, lest it be too late. And just so you know, that's a common message in the New Testament. That's the message Jesus proclaimed. Look at Matthew 4, 17. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the message that the apostle Peter proclaimed. In Acts 2, 38, he says, repent and be baptized. That's the message the Apostle Paul proclaimed. He says in Acts 21, he was writing of his ministry, and he said that he testified of repentance toward God 
and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So John had a message of repentance and judgment. Let's look finally at not the ministry or the message, but the master. And we meet John's master really in verse 13. His master was, of course, Jesus. Verse 13, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Well, here is the Messiah, the one whose John's ministry is pointing to, the one he's preparing the way for, his master. But Jesus comes to be baptized. Well, how does John respond? Well, look at verse 14. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? In other words, John throws up his hands and says, no way. This is a baptism of repentance, Jesus. You're the spotless lamb of God. You don't need to be repenting of anything. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. And yet, Jesus says in verse 15, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus says there's a purpose for this. It's to fulfill all righteousness, which means to complete everything that forms part of a relationship of obedience to God. Let me give you a few features of that fulfill all righteousness. What does it mean that Jesus was coming to fulfill all righteousness? Well, it means, one, that his baptism was to picture his death and resurrection. His baptism also was to prefigure the importance and significance of Christian baptism for all who would follow him. Third, his baptism was to publicly identify with those whom he would save. And lastly, his baptism was purposed to secure that divine affirmation that he was God's son. And we hear that in verse 17, Behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Well, how did John respond to the appearance of his master who said, Baptize me? The end of verse 15, speaking of John, Then he consented. John obeyed his master. And this is our wild man in the wilderness. His ministry, his message, and his master. 